There we are, recording is started. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to this meeting of Cabinet on Thursday, the 16th of uh, September 2021. Uh, and we'll go to apologies for absence, please, for our first item. Yes, the leader from Councillors Elliot King and Alison Pugh. Okay, thank you. Any other apologies for absence? Councillor Thomas? Yeah, it's not an apology for absence, Chair. Um, it's an apology to have to... I've got a medical appointment at, after 12 o'clock, so if I could leave at 12, that'd be greatly no appreciated. Thank you. No problem at all. OK, I hope, we, I hope we still do, we've still we done well before 12 o'clock. Um, all right, we'll move on then to disclosures of personal and prejudicial interest. Are there any for any items on the agenda today? OK, I can see a couple of hands there. Councillor Gibbard? Uh, yeah, a personal and prejudicial interest on the um, school governor's item, so I'll need to leave the meeting. OK, thank you. Councillor Smith? Yeah, same item, 12 local government appointments. I'm a member of the panel. OK, the thank you very much. Sorry, Councillor Smith has um, a dispensation. OK, thank you. Uh, all right, any further declarations? If not, we'll move to item three, the minutes of the previous meeting. They're there on pages one to six. Uh, I've not had. Sorry, I'm getting a lot of feedback. If I could ask people to mute, please. Um, thank you. Um, so um, I've had no uh, amendments suggested for the minutes. Are we happy to approve, Councillor Lewis? Yeah, I'm happy to uh, move them as a true record. Thank you. Uh, have a seconder, please. Happy to second. Thank you very much. OK, all happy to agree. Thank you very much. We move then to uh, announcements of Leader of the Council. I don't have any for this morning, so we'll move to public question time. Um, are there any members of the public uh, who've submitted questions? None, Leader. OK, thank you. We'll go to councillor question time next then, please. Are there any councillors present who wish to ask a question? No, there's no other councillors present, Leader. OK. With that, then we'll go to the first main item, which is uh, the revenue and capital budget monitoring report for the first quarter. And I'll go to Mr. Smith. Thank you, Leader. Uh, in terms of the report before you, I'll canter through in usual style. Um, you have three recommendations on this report when you come to consider it. The first two are normal fashion ones. The third one is not going to win any prizes for grammatical construct. It's a very long, chunky, lumpy one, but I'll explain why uh, as I take you through the report in terms of the overall position, which is a very pleasing one for the first quarter. Section 2.2 makes clear that we remain in uncertain times. Um, you've had the last year's worth of reports from me where I've indicated we had hundreds of millions of pounds worth of flex. I'm not expecting anything that extreme, but I am expecting tens of millions of pounds worth of flex as we see the various grant streams in and out and how COVID continues to pan out. Section 2.3 pulls it all together, and that is the main reason for the slightly tortuous wording of the third recommendation, which is recognising that directorates are officially significantly overspent by over £20 million. But that table makes very, very clear that it is entirely driven by COVID. If you strip the COVID column out, we would be at first quarter reporting overall directorates underspending, which is pretty unheard of for a first quarter because we're always fairly prudent. We don't bank ink until we've got it, for example. 2.7 is a summary of the um, receipts of additional Welsh Government support on top of grants and the same mechanism is working as last year, which is it's a claims in arrears, no guarantee of shares of sums, it's a competitive bid process against everyone else and they still come in relatively late. That's not a criticism of Welsh Government. I'm very grateful for the reimbursements that we get, but it's just the way the process works. It takes a couple of months to flow through. And that very last entry of the loss of income for the first quarter, £3.7 million pounds, was jolly useful because it brings us overall to a, a formal underspend at first quarter, which I will refer to when I do my wrap up. 2.9 indicates that as is usual, I've got some central pots of money to be able to offset director overspending. How they last for the year, we'll, be, we'll have to wait and see because obviously I have a central inflation pot and there are quite a few uncertainties about pay and prices at the moment, as you're all well aware from media reporting. And uh, so I'm using it at the moment to balance overall, but we'll just have to see how the year pans out. Section 3 and 3.2 in particular summarises the use of the contingency fund. And we were fortunate as a result of last year's stellar performance to not only have an in-year contingency, but I topped up and I had £10 million 
on um, <clears throat> the balance sheet for contingency. At this early first quarter, I'm recommending that we deploy the lot to offset director overspending, but I do expect that director overspending to come down, and that is the reason for encouraging directors to do all they can, because if they spend less, there will be more of that conserved. Things that will help with that, as it was only the first quarter, for example, we've just had the recent announcement of our share of the £40 million pounds worth of social care grant. There is a commitment to winter pressures grant to come. So I'm very confident that that use of contingency will come down and will, will enable you to make further decisions in due course in the year. 4.1 draws the whole budget position together as a whole. And as I've already referred to, service overspending, which is technically driven by COVID. Still some residual concerns over council tax shortfalls, but I have a whole raft of actions available to me to be able to bring it overall to a formal first quarter reporting a net underspend forecast right at the start of the year. And I suspect you'll want to, to comment about that leader because I certainly don't recall being in that position possibly never, certainly for a very, very long time. And I am always very prudent in the assumptions that I make in terms of <clears throat> the position. Section five is capital in its normal format. Uh, you will again wish to note that the budget is over 200 million pounds again, which if we achieve will be a repeat of last year's record performance. There are some concerns there because there are major supply issues, which uh, you will all be aware of in terms of the media and price issues. So we may see some competing factors there about things that make it harder for us to spend and things that make it easier for us to spend just because unit costs have gone up. Finally, in normal fashion, the housing revenue account is referenced and that this first quarter relatively relaxed, but there are probably heightened anxieties. And I suspect Councillor Lewis may wish to comment on those. Um, the HRA being ring fenced is particularly vulnerable given it has a very large capital programme financed by revenue, which as I say is ring fenced from housing rents. And again, those supply side issues and price issues may be of concern, but too early for me to have anything at this stage. The rest of the report in normal fashion and it wraps up with Appendix A, which is your summary on a page which formally advises that you do have an underspend for the first quarter and that therefore I am able to easily balance for the year. My final comment, having said it's easy to balance for the year, is because of the relative strength we came into this year after last year's record performance. Uh, the longer term position remains uncertain just in terms of the economics. So I'm awaiting the comprehensive spending review in the national budget at the end of October, and I'm waiting to see what happens with pay and price inflation in the wider economy. Whilst we are affected slightly differently to households, there will be impacts upon us. But certainly for a first quarter in remaining un uncertain COVID times, I can remain as relax as I can be as a section 151 officer so at that point I will hand back to you Lee John and, and to other members who may wish to comment and thank you. Yeah th thank you uh, Mr Smith and, and again I, I do not remember a time when we've come into the year in such a healthy position um, as you've said uh, we would normally be uh, uh, describing a very very uh, significant uh, deficit at this point of the year um, but that, I think that uh, goes uh, to show not only how we've managed during the Covid uh, uh, period, but also how we have uh, made sure that the savings that we intended to flow through as part of the medium term financial plan have largely been met. And I'm sure, uh, you know, that puts us in a relatively uh, safe position in terms of uh, future years, albeit there are some big risks there. We don't know what the comprehensive spending review uh, will provide in terms of the money to Welsh government, what their budget will be for the next few years. And obviously that will impact on our budget as local government. Um, very uh, big risks remain around the pandemic because we're not out of the pandemic yet. And of course, there isn't a huge amount of provision allocated for uh, future years from either government at the present time. So um, we are carrying some some risks. So it's right that you point those out. But I think uh, I think this is the, the happiest statement I've seen from a treasurer in, in many years uh, at quarter one. So I think we should we should bank that one. Um, uh, you, Apologies, I'll go to Councillor Lewis for any comments on the HRA. Uh, thank you, Leader, and thank you to Mr Smith for the report. Um, Mr Smith is right to point out that we're actually in a more positive position at this point with the HRA in terms of our rent recovery than we had anticipated, which is good news. However, we can't be complacent. We need to keep a close eye. Um, we have seen an increase in rent arrears for some tenants. And we do anticipate that this could get worse um, as the pandemic continues. Uh, and so we need to watch that very closely because, as, as Mr Smith has pointed out, our capital programme is closely linked to our revenue. And if the revenue struggles, then the capital programme struggles. 
Also, I think it's important um, for Cabinet to be aware of the risks, whether it's Brexit or whether it's the pandemic or whether it's both. We're seeing a huge hike and an increase in construction materials and supply chains um, are struggling. And so we need to closely monitor that. I think we can safely anticipate that materials will continue to increase. And that again could have an impact on our programme. But nevertheless, we're still delivering through very difficult times, still continuing our new build programme and some very happy tenants handing the keys over to them um, with their energy bills uh, extremely low, helping them to pay their rent. So we, we look forward to continuing with the decarbonisation programme. But as, as you rightly point out, Leader, we do need resources from Welsh Government to, to up the pace and scale of that. And I'm sure that you will be speaking to Welsh Government ministers to make sure that we do get the sufficient funding to be able to roll that programme out across our stock with the largest stockholder out of all the Welsh local authorities. And so it's a mammoth task for us. But I look forward to the challenge and improving people's homes, helping reduce their energy bills and continuing with the major investment programme that we as an administration have uh, continued to put into our council homes and new council home programme. Thank you, Leader. Thank you, Council Lewis. Yes, and uh, the, the pressures uh, that the HRA are facing are obviously equally uh, pronounced in uh, our major capital programme, as Mr Smith has said. Um, whilst it's the, I think it's the second biggest in Wales, it's certainly the biggest programme we've ever had. Um, and obviously the biggest per head of population. I think only Cardiff uh, has a slightly bigger capital programme, but of course they have a much larger population. But, um, you know, we we set out a very ambitious programme, whether it be in housing, whether it be in the, the city regeneration, or whether it be in our schools programme. And um, with that does come some risk. But um, um, my understanding is that we are managing those risks uh, appropriately at the present time, although they do remain. So if there aren't any further hands, uh, I've moved, uh, I think Councillor Lewis did second uh, the uh, report there. Happy to second. Um, so you've got the recommendations on page seven. Uh, so I will ask uh, Mr. Borsden to uh, go to the vote, please. <clears throat> yeah, just, just long to vote now, Leader. <clears throat> Excuse me. Should be on screen now. Anybody not received it? No. Everybody voted? Yeah, okay, I'll close poll. No, why won't let me close it? No, yeah, that's unanimously the nine for one, none against the of state. OK, thank you all for that. And uh, and again, um, it would be remiss of me not to thank uh, Mr Smith and all of the directors uh, for their continued efforts to to ensure that we maintain a healthy uh, financial position as a council. So thank you all for, for your efforts on that. We'll move then to item eight, uh, which is the quarter one uh, performance monitoring report. Um, I'll go to Councillor Stevens. Uh, yeah, thank you, Leader. Um, I'll uh, I'll just touch on a couple of points, but I'm I'm sure colleagues will also uh, want to elaborate on their own portfolios. Uh, the ongoing COVID pandemic has brought huge challenges to our service and continues to do so. Um, the council has never undertaken such change in such a short time scale. This has, uh, of course, had a significant impact on usual areas of performance across the council. Um, since March last year, thousands of staff were successfully mobilised to work remotely, which took huge effort from our ICT teams. And it was during this time that we also supported the Welsh Government shielding programmes, setting up a call centre, providing daily support to thousands of vulnerable residents, coordinated the build of the field hospital, provided financial support to thousands of businesses, delivered free school meals and helped set up food banks across the city. It's in this context that this report should be considered. Um, there's been an, an unprecedented time and the Council's response to the pandemic has been extraordinary. You can see from paragraph 2.9 that 81% of indicators reported showed improvement compared with the previous year, albeit that this is based on a smaller set of data. The report does show that we've improved in a lot of areas. Looking at 4.3, there are a lot of uh, positive areas in transforming 
economy and infrastructure. Um, most of our targets have been met this quarter um, and the impacts of COVID on the construction sector uh, are becoming increasingly clear as just referenced in the last report. Um, but despite this, during the first quarter, our, our major regen projects have continued to make substantial progress on site. Um, you will also see in 4.5 that there's been uh, continued improvement in our transformation and future council development. Um, our online demand uh, continues to grow and recently our new website has come online, which has really improved the look and feel, making it more accessible and easier to navigate, allowing residents, businesses and communities to uh, easily access, access a broad range of our services. Um, I'm, pleased, I'm also pleased to say that thanks to the excellent work of our officers, we managed to secure a significant grant uh, to deliver our e-democracy project, which will implement hybrid public meetings, further increasing participation in the democratic process, uh, which can only be a good thing for the residents of Swansea. So um, with that, I'm happy to remove the report. OK, thank you, uh, Councillor Stevens. I'll um, formally second. But I then go to cabinet members who may wish to contribute from their portfolio perspective. So I've got to come to Lewis first. Thank you, Leader. Um, I, I did highlight um, uh, some of our uh, initiatives and investment in housing in, in the previous report. Um, but just to draw cabinet members' attention to pages eight and nine. Um, which outline the significant investment in terms of our Welsh housing quality standard, our new homes and renewable technologies on council properties for the benefit of tenants. Um, I think it's fair to say that we've got an ambitious capital programme and we're delivering on that. So I won't go into the detail. I know members have had the report and they'll have had a chance to read it, but I just wanted to highlight the, the excellent work that's going on with building services and with housing department, working more collaboratively and closely than ever before. Uh, and it's um, something, a track record to be extremely proud of in terms of delivery. So thank you for the opportunity to highlight it today. Thank you, Councillor Lewis. And of course, uh, it was remiss of me not to acknowledge the uh, the recent uh, award uh, for that house building uh, program, um, where we we took that award as a council um, in uh, in the event that you attended uh, in Anapsi uh, recently, which is a real accolade for the council. And uh, I know we were nominated in a number of areas. And I'm sure there'll be more silverware on its way to us in future years. So well done to to all of the team on that. Thank you, Leader. And we do have another MJ Awards for housing on Friday in London. So I'm sure the Cabinet will wish us luck with that one. Absolutely, absolutely. I'll go to Councillor Gibbard next. Thank you, Leader. Um, I just wanted to draw um, attention to section 4.4 of the report really on tackling pov poverty and just highlight the, as, as it re uh, references um, the Bevan Foundation report of uh, the significant pressure that our communities um, are under at the moment with falling incomes, job insecurity, uh, personal debt crisis. Um, and it's just, uh, you know, I'm incredulous at the fact that against the backdrop of this, the government is set to to cut universal credit and increase national insurance, once again, putting the burden of their political cho choices on, on the shoulders of ordinary people. But in contrast to that, I'm very proud of the actions of this Labour-led administration um, that we're taking, you know, in multiple areas with our employability team, welfare rights team, housing teams, as, as Councillor Lewis has already outlined, and, and of course in, in section 4.4, uh, for 448, um, the partnership working with our Swansea Poverty Forum and, and uh, other um, organisations in the voluntary sector. So, so yeah, so obviously very worrying times for people, but some positive things to report from our side. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Gibbard. And, and again, um, very grateful for the work that you're leading on in terms of our uh, declaration of human rights, which we're working to towards the end of the year. And of course, that will pick up a number of uh, items which we'll talk about in the next uh, equalities report, of course. So thank you for that. I'll move now to uh, Councillor Francis Davis next. Thank you, Leader. I'd like to um, congratulate our staff, really, at the way they work through uh, COVID. Um, when you look around Swansea now, and especially when you see the Copper Bay, how that has carried on right the way through, um, despite the problems that has brought and despite the problems of Brexit as well, um, trying to obtain materials to, to carry on and bring in that uh, that project 
on on time. There has been certain delays, um, but minor when you consider the problems that have um, been caused by Brexit and by um, by COVID. When you people come back into Swansea now, they can't fail to see the new bridge linking into the arena, the new park that's being built, the multi-storey car park, um, and all the work that's going on in Swansea. And also, you know, to congratulate many of the private sector as well that have contributed to Swansea's economy and infrastructure with the new student accommodation. You know, the £50 million scheme has come out of um, uh, Swansea High Street Station when we'll see the, um, the the new accommodation there. I think 100 new students have uh, gone into that this week and that by the end of November, there should be 780 students in that part of High Street, uh, bringing in many thousands of students into Swansea, um, which is essential to, to our economy here and bringing people to to um, study in our universities. So I think it's uh, Swansea a better place because of this work that we've carried on right the way through uh, this pandemic. So congratulations to all concerned. Thank you, Councillor Francis Davis. Uh, Councillor Child next. Thank you, Leader. Um, yeah, I'd just like to draw attention to page two of the report 39 of the agenda around safeguarding. I mean, it says there that this has been a time of unprecedented pressure on social services uh, and those pressures continue right now. So, um, But I, I want to praise staff for their unstinting support for vulnerable people throughout this period and their, their excellent work. Uh, they truly are key workers. Uh, and deserve our praise and deserve uh, across the board, not just our employees, the, the, the pay and, and job security and conditions uh, that go with uh, our universal rec recognition as key workers. Uh, the department has continued to act appropriately with the with the with the pressures that have been with, on it, along with our health colleagues, and, uh, and and I'm sure it will continue to do so. But just the recognition of the extremely hard work and dedication that staff has undertaken during this period and the effectiveness of that, and thank them. Absolutely, thank you, Councillor Child, Councillor Smith. Yeah, I just want to echo what's been said uh, by both other people's portfolios in terms of education and skills. Um, you know, I'd like to thank everyone at the front line, both in schools and in those that are supporting the schools uh, for the way that they responded throughout this unprecedented crisis. Uh, we've managed to continue to support our learners to fulfill their potential, but in particular, we've been able to, uh, the work that's gone into supporting their well-being, and I think that has to be the priority at the moment. Um, and one thing that comes to, to mind is that straight away is the work that went in to look, ensuring that the needs of those most vulnerable were met throughout the pandemic, and, and I think in specifically of the way that we maintained uh, provision for uh, learners on free school meals uh, and other aspects of that work. And I think that was a credit to our officers uh, who really went the extra mile and, and as they continue to do so, because we're not out of the woods yet. No, th thank you for that. And uh, just just before we uh, close, or I'll go back to Andrew for any f final comments. Um, uh, clearly, um, the staff have performed uh, brilliantly in all areas of the of the council and all of the services that we've delivered, especially so in the last 18 months. I think, uh, you know, the, the recognition, the words that we use, I don't think uh, can ever uh, truly capture um, the the effort that's been put in. And of course, as, as, as has been mentioned here, we are not out of the pandemic yet. People have been at these jobs now um, and doing additional tasks, looking after people in communities, changing their services, supporting uh, individuals. Um, for over 18 months, and that that will take its toll. And uh, you know, um, there are pressures, as we know, in social care and health at the moment. But there are still pressures across a lot of a lot of the departments of of council and and of government itself. So um, it's something that we we really do need to recognise the efforts that our, our staff have taken, and um, we we're truly thankful for them. So, um, Councillor Stevens, I don't know whether there was anything you wanted to add in summary. Um, if not, obviously we we can go to the vote. No, nothing further, leader. I think I think everyone hit it on nail on the head with uh, their comments uh, uh, on their areas, and so just happy to move the report. 
Okay, thank you. The report's been moved and seconded, so we'll go to Mr. Borsden for the vote. It just launch the vote now, Leader. We should have all received it. Has anyone not received it? No. Okay, I'll give you two minutes to vote. <coughs> Excuse me. There we are. Close the poll now, Leader. Again, that's unanimous. It's nine for and none against. OK, thank you very much, colleagues. Um, we'll move then to uh, item nine, which is the annual equality review 2021. Councillor Gibbard. Thank you very much, Leader. Um, yes, yeah, thank you. I'm very happy to move our annual equality review. I'd like to begin by thanking our officers, Richard Rowlands and Joanne Portwood, for the hard work they've done on this, which is our first annual equality review um, of our strategic equality plan, which was passed in April last year. Um, clearly, as we've just been talking about, like so much else, um, that we perhaps haven't made quite as much progress as we would have liked because of, of COVID. Um, but the pandemic has definitely brought equality issues more sharply in focus, as is outlined in section three of the report. Um, I particularly like to draw attention to the locked out um, report with the stark statistic that 68% of all deaths from COVID-19 were of disabled people, um, a frightening and devastating stat there for, for those families. Um, and also the work showing the disproportionate effect on our black, Asian and minority ethnic communities. And of course, on children of young people, or, or on the elderly. Um, so it's vital that we use this information to uh, go in forward as we plan for recovery um, and to use that phrase although it's you know it's a bit of a cliche but that we do use that information to, to build back better um, to go on to some of the important work that we have been doing, um, our new integrated impact assessments and the introduction of the socioeconomic duty is now in place and this will build on our existing good practice and hopefully help with, with better decision making. Um, I'm delighted to report the, the good progress we've been making behind the scenes with our public sector pa um, partners on our ambition to become a human rights city as the leader uh, alluded to earlier and more on this very soon. Um, we are working to improve our staff training and ensure that we've got an effective and diverse workforce that reflects and serves our communities. Uh, Councillor Stevens mentioned earlier the launching of our new website with, with um, improved accessibility. Um, the report goes on to outline many, many more case studies, um, uh, you know, showing the work that's been done on, in relation to this. And it really does show our cross-council commitment to equalities. Uh, still, of course, a lot of work to do. Um, I think there always will be. It's one of those things that we're we are never going to sit on our laurels and say that we, we've done it. Um, but um, I think it does show that we have made some good progress towards our equality objectives. Um, so thank you very much. And I'm happy to move the report. Thank you, Councillor Gibbard. I'm very, very happy to second uh, formally. Um, I think you make some really good points in there, especially about the disproportionate impact uh, of COVID. I mean, that, and that is something that um, really should sh send, send a shudder through through everyone because it is clear that those in poverty, um, those with disabilities and those uh, of a certain ethnic background have all been disproportionately hit by this virus. And, and as you say, it's incumbent upon us now to build those learnings uh, into what we do as we, as we reform services and rebuild uh, post-pandemic. So um, the report has been moved and seconded. Is there anybody wish to comment before I go to the vote? No, OK, I'll go to Mr. Borsden then, if we could uh, launch the vote. Sorry, Mr. Bozen, you're on uh, mute there, but I assume you're giving us... Sorry, the Leader, yeah, I put it on mute to stop the feedback. Yeah, yeah I've closed the poll now and it's 100% um, yeah, unanimous vote. OK, thank you very much. Thank you, colleagues. Uh, our next item then is increased places, uh, planned places as a skull pen and brin. Uh, Councillor Smith. Yes, thank you, Leader. And can I thank the officers who have been presenting this, uh, preparing this report. Um, we previously discussed this and it's been out of consultation. Um, and it will add places in Swansea and it would 
enable us to care, to look at, meet the needs of more of our own children in Swansea in Swansea. So on that basis, I would move the report, Leader. Yes, thank you, Councillor Smith. A, a really positive uh, um, step forward, this one, and uh, very happy to formally second. Are there any Cabinet members who wish to comment on this one? If not, uh, I'd echo your comments, Councillor Smith, and we'll move to the vote. So, uh, Mr. Bosden, if you could launch the vote for us. Yeah, just launch the vote now, Leader. Should be on screen for you all. I'll close the poll now. And again, that's unanimous uh, for the recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Bosden. Thank you, colleagues. Um, next item, item 11, is Welsh and Education Strategic Plan. And I'll go back to Councillor Smith. Yes, thank you, Leader. And again, I'd like to thank the officers who've been involved in preparing this report. Um, it, it gives a good temperature check of um, where we are in terms of Welsh medium education and uh, Welsh ed in education more generally in Swansea. Um, it looks at um, current demands, current trends, how are we responding to those, and offers a way of uh, moving forward and planning for future growth, uh, both in, re in response to our own needs in Swansea and the targets that are uh, emanating as part of a national agenda. We now require to consult on this, and there's a, uh, I think it's a two-month uh, window of consultation, and I would formally move that we adopt the report and, and consult on that basis, Leader. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Very uh, happy to second this one. Um, I'll, I'll put it out to uh, Cabinet members if anybody wishes to comment. No? OK. I'll ask Mr Bosden then to launch <coughs> the vote, please. Yeah, it's just been launched, Leader. Any members not had it? I'll close the poll now, Leader. And again, that's 100% uh, unanimous votes, 9 4. Many thanks. Uh, many thanks, colleagues. Um, our next item is the uh, uh, school governor appointments. I know, I think Councillor Gibbard had, uh, or sorry, Councillor Thomas had. Uh, had an interest, I believe, was it, Councillor Thomas? No, it was, it was me. It was me. Oh, sorry, you was Councillor Gibbard. Apologies, Councillor Thomas. You got your hand up. Yes, I, it was remiss of me at the beginning of the meeting, Chair. I, could I declare a, a personal interest on this? I know one of the applicants at a personal level, so it's personal interest only. Okay, thank you. And uh, Councillor Smith, you declared a personal interest, but you have dispensation on this item, yes? I have dispensation to speak, but not vote. And I just want to say it is pleasing to be able to fill some of the uh, vacancies as local authority representatives on the uh, on the school governing bodies, because these play a, a key role in uh, in supporting our schools. Okay, fantastic. Thank you very much. So you've got the recommendations there on uh, page uh, 184. Um, if I can go to the vote, uh, Mr. Bosden, please. Yeah, come to it. Happy to second, uh, Leader? Yes, apologies. Happy to second formally. Yeah, I'll launch the vote now. Should be on screen. Any members? No, I have it. No. I'll close the poll now. So that's 100% a 7 for leader, obviously, with the, the two, two members not voted. So okay, just thank you very oh, much. Councillor Gibbard back in. There we are, leader. Uh, Councillor Gibbard back in the meeting. OK, thank you. Thank you, colleagues. So the next item is the uh, City Deal Life Sciences Wellbeing and Sports Campuses Business Case. Uh, snappy title, but a really, really important project and another one um, that is now through the gate in terms of approval uh, by the UK and Welsh Government. This brings our total now to nine of the, uh, sorry, uh, to seven of the nine projects 
uh, and programs that exist in the deal. So we're making really good progress. And now we have more approved uh, projects and programs than any other deal uh, in Wales, which is a really good uh, position to be in. Uh, in terms of the report itself, you've got the recommendations there on page 189. But I wanted to draw your attention to uh, the um, detail in paragraphs two and three, first of all. Um, they lay out exactly um, where the uh, context is, as I said, within the city deal, but then the specifics around what we're delivering um, as part of phase one and phase two. With the city deal project itself, I think um, whilst phase one is really exciting and, and an important step forward, it's the enabling aspects of what this could do longer term with our partners in the university and the health board that is a really exciting uh, point of this, because as, as with many of the city deal projects, they're intended to be catalysts for bigger and even more significant investment, jobs creation and innovation. And I think the innovation elements that this brings uh, to the city deal is, is a really exciting uh, um, project for us. And I'm very, very glad to see it underway. And of course, it will have uh, impacts locally in both uh, uh, near Singleton and uh, Skelly Lane and of course at the Morriston Hospital. So um, really, really uh, pleasing to see this year. It's been one, I think, of the long burners. Uh, but one that we should be really pleased to see here before us today. So very happy to take questions, but with that, I'll formally move the report. I'll, I'll look to my colleague for a second. Happy to second, Lita. Thank you very much, Councillor Lewis. Are there any questions or comments on the report? No? Okay, we'll go then to um, to the vote, please, Mr. Bogle Yes, yeah, it's just been launched, Lita, so it should be on screen for you all now. <clears throat> Any members not had it? Okay. So close the poll now, leader. And that's 100%. That's 9 4. Okay, thank you very much. Um, colleagues, we'll now go to item 14, which I believe is the gambling policy uh, review, and I'll go to Councillor Hopkins. Yeah, thanks, Lita. Today, this is very much a tidying up exercise in line with legislation and changes within uh, within Swansea. Um, this is a statutory obligation. We need now to OK these changes, go out to consultation, and then bring it back to full council for, for, uh, for adoption. So I've got nothing to add to the report. The changes there are highlighted within the appendices. I'm more than happy to remove the report. Thank you, Mr. Hopkins. Very happy to, to second. Uh, are there any questions for Councillor Hopkins on the report? If not, uh, we'll go to the vote then, please, again. Yeah, it's been launched now, Lee. That should be on screen for you all. Has anyone not had it? Okay. Close the poll now, Leah. Again, that's uh, nine four and none against. Okay, many thanks, colleagues. Uh, and coming then to our final open uh, session report, uh, and that's the Swansea City Centre repurposing strategy. Councillor Francis Davis. Thank you, uh, Leader. As I said earlier, on one one of the other um, items on the agenda, um, the amount of work that's been going on in Swansea. Um, but things like COVID and other things have actually worked against Swansea, not just Swansea, but the UK in general, and not, um, and have had an effect on the high street right throughout the United Kingdom. I don't think any part of the United Kingdom has been untouched by the downturn with uh, with COVID, how it's affected national chains in retail throughout. Therefore, the um, policies that we had over the last five years, uh, we've needed to go and back and look at those policies to see how they fit for purpose for um, Swansea emerging out in um, out of the effects of COVID. And we must look at how we uh, repurpose our strategies for Swansea. Luckily, Swansea, compared to a lot of cities in the United Kingdom, are in a much better position um, to succeed coming out of COVID because of the work that, um, led by yourself, Leader, have um, put into uh, Swansea. When you look at the Copper Bay Phase 1, 
and if you see on paragraphs 1.8, um, the work that we've carried out on the Kingsway in Wine Street, how oh, that's being repurposed, um, investment in Swansea Market, the work that's going on to 71, 72, the Kingsway. Uh, I briefly touched on Mariner Street early, uh, earlier. Um, a huge development and great for the top end of High Street. The digital infrastructure program um, through the city deal, which you just mentioned, um, 55 million pound being spent there. And so therefore we um, uh, need to work, um, build on the work that's all being carried out, you know, the living buildings, the Albert Hall, Castle Square, the former PHS buildings, um, the King's Building, Palace Theatre. There's, there's no part of the Swansea city centre that's not being um, looked at and repurposed. And so therefore, we need to build on that, get it as part of our policies, ensure that we consult. We want more people working and living and coming to Swansea as a destination. Leisure, culture, retail and people living in the city are all part of our armory to make Swansea come out of uh, COVID as a stronger city, as a, a destination. And I think that um, Swansea was well blessed in, in having a new leader push these things through um, the, the vitality you put into um, central government and Welsh government to make sure that they supported the city deal um, was second to none. So you see at the top the um, recommendations to, to approve the Swansea City Centre repurposing strategy as attached in Appendix 1. Um, then two is approve the principle of the proposed interventions outlined in the Swansea City Centre repurposing strategies. Um, also, the approve the environment of 500k uh, funding currently allocated for work on Oxford Street to the wider repurposing action outlined within the report that any further budget requirements are set out for separately. So I move and happy to, happy to move that leader. Thank you, Councillor Francis Davis, and can I thank you for the, the work that you've done uh, with uh, all of the major projects in the city. And again, uh, it, this has been a big team effort which has touched many departments across the council. Uh, I'm very happy to lead that team, but it has been a team effort, and I'm very grateful to yourself, other cabinet members, and of course, um, the officers who've, who've worked very hard. You're quite right. I mean, this would be an impressive record uh, for any council in the best of times. But given that we've had to try and deliver this through the against the, the headwinds of both Brexit and uh, a once in a hundred year pandemic is an even more extraordinary uh, position to be in. Uh, as Mr. Smith said earlier, we have um, uh, the largest capital programme we've ever had, uh, and it is the second largest in Wales. But of course, Whilst this uh, part of it, uh, which is laid out in the report today, which is extremely poor, important, is not the biggest part. That, that's still our schools. And, and when we went to the people of Swansea in 2017 and said, we are going to build a better Swansea for you if you elect us, that's exactly what we've gone on and done. Whether it be housing led by Councillor Lewis, whether it be schools led by Councillor Rayner and Councillor Smith, or, or whether it be um, the city centre stuff led by yourself and Councillor Hopkins and others, um, it has been a truly remarkable uh, effort in terms of the capital programme. As you've alluded to, Councillor uh, Francis Davis, if we were to be coming out of COVID with none of this happening, and we've got to remember that that list on page uh, 427 and 428, most of those things weren't in existence some five years ago. So, you know, that, that is a true record of delivery. People have said we're in a, a city of artist impressions for, for many years. Well, no longer. You know, there is no part of the city that you can walk around now, no part of the community you can walk around now, and you will not see delivery on the ground. So we should be extremely proud uh, of that because it will make a difference to people's lives. And this is not about putting up shiny new buildings. It's about, as you said, creating places for people to live, creating places for people to work, and giving people reasons to visit Swansea and be successful. So I, I'm very proud of, of where we are, but that was the opening act. Now we get on to the main performance and the repurposing report, the announcement that we'll shortly make on our new strategic partner and the big news in terms of future developments, which we've yet to uh, share with the public, uh, are to come in the coming months. So uh, a great first.
first few steps, but we've got plenty more to do yet. So thank you, Councillor Francis Davis. I'm very happy to, to second. So unless there's anybody who wishes to come in and, and comment further, um, I will ask Mr. Borsden to, to launch the vote. We'll launch the vote now, leaders. It should be on the screen for members. Anybody not had it? No, I'll give you a few seconds then. <clears throat> I'll close the poll now, leader. And again, that's 100%, nine for, none against. Fantastic. Thank you, colleagues. Um, so that concludes the open part of our agenda for today. Um, item uh, 16 is uh, the exclusion of the public. Uh, the legal officer has given you the rationale there for going into private session. Uh, can I ask, are you all happy to accept that recommendation? Aye. Thank you very much. So we'll pause there for Mr. Borsden to pause the uh, recording.